Hello Salesforce Ohana, Walters954 here. In this video, I'm going to be going over how to use radio buttons and record choice sets inside of Flows. This comes as a request from Rodrigo in the YouTube community. If you have concepts you'd like explained, go ahead and like and subscribe, and make sure to drop a comment down below of what you'd like to see next. All right, so let's jump into this. We're going to create a new flow. It will be a screen flow because we're going to be accepting information from the user. Let's go ahead and start creating some resources right out the gate. We're not going to jump into a screen because I already know we're going to need some specific items and values to store information from the user and for our flow process before we even get into the screens. So I'm going to hit a new resource here. And one of the main ones that you're almost always going to create is some sort of record value. In this case, since this is going to live on the opportunity and we are going to use that opportunity ID to filter down our opportunity products, let's go ahead and get a value to store that. The data type will be text. We're going to allow for input because this is going to be coming from outside of the flow. And hit done with that. And then we are also going to need to store the primary opportunity products ID. So let's go ahead and save that variable. Once again, it's text. We do not need to have it available for input or output because everything that's related to this resource is going to be inside of the flow. Next up, we're going to add a new resource as a record choice set. Record choice sets allow you to filter down lists of records that you can use in specific choices, like pick lists and radio buttons, which is what we're going to be showcasing here. So let's go ahead and give this a name. The object that we're going to be using is the opportunity line item or opportunity product. And here's where the fun starts to happen. Let's go ahead and add some conditions going to add the condition of the opportunity ID. This is the ID of the opportunity based on the current record page that we will be on. So let's add that in. We're not going to need to sort and we don't need to add a maximum choice. And now for some of the magic behind this. So the choice label is the actual label that we're going to see when we're making our selections. So in this case, it needs to be the name. Um, you can add other field values if there are different identifiers, so like product ID or something like that. But in this case, the name will work. We get to store one specific value back into the record choice set. In this case, I want to actually store the ID of the record that is selected. We can store a lot more than that in using these additional stored parameters here, but the ID is going to be all that we need. All right, let's go ahead and hit done with that. And then now we can actually start working on the screens themselves. It's going to be a pretty simple screen. Let's name our first one. We will call this primary opportunity selection. Click out of there. You now make sure to add your descriptions and all of that good stuff. And then what we're looking for over here is radio buttons. So we have our radio buttons and then let's call this label will be select primary and let's make this required. Why not? This is the record choice set that we already had. It will filter down all of the opportunity light items that we have related to that opportunity, or we could have added a bunch in manually if we have a bunch of manual record choices that we wanted to add in. Same thing with pick list choice sets that come from actual pick lists on an object. Let's use our record choice set, hit done. And finally, let's just update that opportunity line item. For our two ways of updating the values, we actually don't have a specific record variable or record collection to update, but we're getting the values back from the record choice set of the ID. So we can kind of do a little trick or just a manual way of updating things by going straight into the opportunity product, 
we're going to set the ID of the field that we're looking for since we get it back from the record choice set in here. This value will have it. And then let's update our primary field to true. Wire everything up. Let's save. Let's pick a good name. Select primary opportunity. Requires opportunity ID. This should be line item. Little trick there. All right, so let's save this. And to start out, let's debug it. Make sure everything is working. You know, I always do like to debug and then we'll finally put it on the page. Okay, we can see that we need our input value here. Let's go over and grab an opportunity ID, paste that in, run. And we can see, bam, we're looking at two opportunity products that are related only to this opportunity ID. Based on how radio buttons work, we are only able to select one at a time. If there are multiples, we would still only be able to select one. And if we hit next, let's call this one our primary. We should see some stuff here. Uh, this looks like it was successful, everything updated. One thing to note, when you run the debugger, it's actually updating your fields inside of your org. So just be mindful of that. You could accidentally send emails out or um, update records that you are actually testing this on. So make sure to do all of this in a sandbox. And we can see that our primary field was updated here. Let's go ahead and edit that out and put this on the page. So all of that looks like it was working. Let's activate our flow and go to the page builder. Add in our flow. Doesn't look like everything's loading there, but I can kind of see what's going on. Uh, so we have our flow here, select primary opportunity line item. And here's the thing that makes everything work on the page layout. So before we manually passed in an opportunity ID value, but we want this to dynamically change based on whatever page we're on. So we're gonna say pass in record ID into this variable, hit save. Now when we're looking at this on the page, it is showing our two opportunity line items. Same thing with the radio buttons. And then let's go ahead and select this. And bam, you can see that primary was selected on here. Uh, if we go to other opportunities with products, well, none of these have any, so let's just go ahead and add some products in here. Now we're going to need to refresh this, but we should see our radio buttons update. Now we have a ton more to select from, and the way that radio buttons work, we're only allowed to select one. Then if we hit next, we should see on this platinum one that, hey, it gets selected as our primary. Thank you all so much for watching. Remember, this was a request from Rodrigo. So if you have things you want explained, make sure to drop a comment down below. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. I'm Walters954, and remember, I believe in you.